Good afternoon, Floyd. We're glad you could be here to help us capture the stories of Pflugerville over the last 50 years. Well, thank you for having me. Tell us your name and where you were born. Uh, Floyd Akers. I was born in San Diego, California. And uh, how did you get into your career, where you went to school? And well, yeah, I uh, actually grew up in San Antonio, Texas. Both my parents and grandparents are all from San Antonio. Um, but after high school, I attended the University of Wyoming for my undergraduate degree, where I got a bachelor's degree in history. And then they gave me in-state tuition for law school, so I stayed up in Wyoming for law school. Uh, after that, I came down here to Texas to practice law. Uh, I actually spent my last year at St. Mary's University in San Antonio to get uh, come back to Texas, basically. Uh, my first year out of law school, I went to work for the Texas Department of Public Safety as a prosecuting, prosecuting DWIs and driver's license uh, and concealed weapon license uh, violations and things like that. From there, I became an assistant city attorney for the city of San Antonio. Uh, shortly thereafter, I became the city attorney for New Braunfels, Texas. From New Braunfels, I went to Bryan, Texas to be their city judge for a couple of years. From Bryan, I went to uh, the University of Texas at Brownsville and Texas Southmost College. And I was that university's first uh, in-house attorney uh, down there. And then from there, I came up to Pflugerville uh, to be really Pflugerville's first full-time employee uh, city attorney. And who did you interview with for that position? The city council and the uh, city manager at the time, uh, who was uh, David Beesing. And what year was that? That was uh, 2007. So what was happening in Pflugerville in 2007? What was your first impression of the town when you came up for the interview? And then what were uh, some of the agenda items that um, caught attention? Sure. Well, back then uh, we were developing uh, agreements uh, for the New Sweden MUDs. In fact, I remember on my job application they, they gave me some some of the new Sweden agreements to look at to see about some new housing subdivisions out there and what I thought of them. Uh, so the, the MUDs were proliferating out in the ETJ. Uh, the city didn't have, the city was still fairly small. I, I, I say it was about 35,000 people when I first came here. Um, it ha didn't have much in the way of code compliance. Uh, and so that was a big item for the, for the council at the time uh, to make sure the city got cleaned up, make sure people took care of their yards. Uh, it was still kind of a, a semi rule community um, and it, it's, uh, it's changed quite a bit since then quite frankly um, and so it's kind of kind of interesting to see it evolve. How did you evolve into your present position? What is your present position now? My present position is I am the executive director and general counsel for the Pflugerville Community Development Corporation. Uh, when I first came to town I actually offered uh, PCDC as we call it had its own attorney and I offered a city attorney to do that for free. And so the city council took me up on that offer. And so I was actually handling the attorney jobs for both organizations. Um, I worked as city attorney here for five years. I was city attorney and I was a city prosecutor. I did both, both positions. Um, and I was PCDC's attorney. And so what happened was I started, uh, uh, I started, the city really had no economic development in-house. They didn't have a person who was dedicated to that. So when development deals came up that weren't really in PCDC's wheelhouse, whether it be a retail project or it be uh, something that they just weren't very well equipped to handle, it kind of fell to me to negotiate the deals. And the, one of the biggest deals I did was the solar farm, uh, which was planned for out off Amanda Carlson Road. That's a 60 megawatt solar farm site that we have out there. And we actually think that that project's a long time coming, but we think that project will actually get built here in the next uh, 12 months. And so we're kind of excited about that because it's about $250 million in infrastructure. And it may end up being as big as 150 megawatts of solar power being generated here in the ETJ of Pflugerville. But that was the first deal I did, and that was a quarter billion dollar deal uh, with tax abatements. And then we did another deal uh, that was also a quarter billion dollars for a large data center. Now, they've told me they're actually going to start that. These are such huge projects. Sometimes they take a while. That project's supposed to break ground in, uh, or filed for their permits in the third quarter of this year. And at full build out, that facility could put as much value as $100 million or yeah, hundred million dollars in the Pflugerville. Uh, it's it's kind of an exciting. It's a big project. Uh, you mentioned the uh, experiences in other uh, towns, so you you pretty much had uh, your finger in municipalities, and the the experiences at those places certainly formed the foundation for you to jump off into this uh, economic uh, arena. Sure. Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, I've worked, I've been, I'm representing governments and, and, and local governments in Texas for 20 years now as an attorney. Uh, when, you know, when I came to Pflugerville, uh, you couldn't buy a pair of socks in town. And we opened a Walmart. And at the same time that they were protesting Walmarts in Austin, 
our mayor was out there cutting the ribbon on our Walmart because we were so excited that we finally had a place to shop, that our citizens actually had access to shopping. It didn't hurt the small businesses because, frankly, there just weren't that many small businesses. And, uh, and people were so excited that they didn't have to leave town to go shop. Uh, since then, we did the deal for the Stonehill Town Center at the intersection of the 130 Tollway and the 45 Tollway. And that has just blown up Pflugerville like nobody's business. And now that shopping center in, in six or seven short years is now the fifth largest shopping center in the Austin MSA. And it looks like they're going to acquire 60 acres behind Best Buy and become the second largest shopping center in the Austin MSA. Uh, and we're just growing exponentially at this point. Uh, tell me about the uh, history of PCDC, how it got started. Sure. Uh, well, about 12 years ago, the voters of Pflugerville, uh, they went to the ballot and they created the Pflugerville Community Development Corporation. It was created as what we called back then as a uh, Type B Economic Development Corporation. Uh, and we, we adopted the ability to do just about any type of project allowed by the law, uh, which is mainly economic development uh, projects, parks, capital improvement to parks, and we can do water projects specifically. And so those are kind of the, the three, three areas that we kind of focused on. Uh, there are a few other things we do. We do some public safety projects, and we uh, have done a lot of vocational programs with, uh, for job training uh, at PISD, or PFISD now, as I should say. And, uh, and so that's been real exciting, that we've been able to help out. We go to our local businesses and, and find all that stuff out. But we had this ballot. The voters voted it in. And we've been collecting a half cent of the sales tax ever since. And when that, that law first came into uh, being, when the corporation was first created, we didn't have much retail in town. So we weren't collecting much on that half cent. Well, now today, just, just a few short years later, we're collecting just a little over $3 million a year in that half cent sales tax. And we've been able to do just great things with economic development in Pflugerville. And that has been also advantageous for the uh, property owner or the homeowner. Yes. Because you have sales tax coming in to That's right. provide opportunities for the city. Absolutely. And if you look at it, ever since PCDC was created, every year since then, the city has been able to reduce property taxes in Pflugerville, 12 years straight, right through one of the greatest recessions uh, that we've had in the history of the United States. We've been so, uh, we've had so much growth and so much success here in Pflugerville that we've actually been able to reduce property taxes all those years, uh, creating that commercial tax base. And if you look since the time that PCDC was created, our sales tax has grown on average by 14% annually, which is a shocking amount. That's, that's a lot of growth. And we're still maintaining that growth. Last year, our sales tax grew by 18%, 17.9%. It's amazing growth we have here in Pflugerville. Uh, tell me about the governance of PCDC. It is a board, uh, is it elected by the people or it is appointed? Uh... Yes, ma'am, it's appointed. It's appointed by the city council. Uh, currently, we also have two cur uh, city council members that serve on the board. Uh, and then the other five members, so we a total of seven members, uh, are appointed by the city council. Uh, they, we are independent of the city. They hire a staff. I'm their executive director. We have three other employees uh, that work for the corporation. And we kind of operate semi-autonomously from the, from the city. Uh, but we assist the city in economic development. Uh, the city really still doesn't have much in the way of an economic program just for the city. Uh, but so we handle a lot of things for the city. And then we hand it off to the city at the appropriate time so they can handle the project from there. To uh, get Pflugerville in the spotlight, to get it as an attractive place for uh, companies to come, uh, you had to brand it or to get it out there. What were your uh, efforts to either connect with people, go to conferences, or uh, get the word out that sure. Pflugerville was available? Well, you know, we, we've actually done a lot of that. Since I've taken over PCDC about three years ago now, three and a half years ago, uh, we've, we've really ramped up our marketing efforts and, to, and, and, and take in, when we have a project like the solar farm, we put it on the, on, the inter, on the national press wires. And that's why for the last three years, Money Magazine has picked up PCDC in Pflugerville and said, hey, Pflugerville is one of the best communities in America. We're a great community. There's a lot of great communities in America, but the reason we're making those lists on Money Magazine, and this year we were number 20 on the list, which is fantastic, best small town in the in country to live in between 50 and 250,000, is because we promote the city so much. And we, we take about 10% of our budget is dedicated to promotions. Uh, now, this year, we're actually, we're actually shifting our, prom our promotion of, of the, the light industrial type uh, manufacturing market in Pflugerville, and we're starting to promote Pflugerville as an office market. And we're going to spend $150,000 this year in marketing with a major marketing firm to promote Pflugerville as that office market. And we're going to create what we, of course, call the Pflugerville office market what the brokers in Austin will call the Northeast Austin office market. 
and what our developers call the extreme Northwest Houston office market. So we're really excited about that. We think Pflugerville is, is on the cusp of a major change, and it's a change that's really going to affect the citizens here for generations to come. Some of the things people don't know about Pflugerville, and, and, and I'm sure people would like to know for posterity reasons, is one, we're the most culturally diverse community in Central Texas. We are 7% Asian, 17% African American, 34% Hispanic, the remainder Caucasian. We feel that this would be one of our great strengths in the community. Uh, also, what most people don't realize is that per capita, uh, more people in Pflugerville make over $150,000 a year than do in Round Rock or Cedar Park. Surprises a lot of people. The flip side of that scenario is more people in Pflugerville also make under $25,000 a year than Round Rock or Cedar Park. So we're very conscious about promoting all levels of jobs at PCDC to make sure that uh, the rising tide, the, the great economic uh, uh, explosion we're seeing here in the city makes everybody wealthier and that we don't leave any of our citizens behind and we provide good jobs for everybody who lives here regardless of their education level. Uh, we hope that they go and get higher education and we try to train them uh, or, or train them for, for a skill uh, so they have that ability which is one of the reasons we sit there and we, uh, we give so much money to the Pflugerville Education Foundation because we know what those skills are in the community that are needed and we figure if we can educate our students, the ones that decide that college is not for them, can go into the workforce with that basic training they already got at, at PFISD and really start making an impact immediately, make enough money to support a family immediately uh, and just build a better Pflugerville. Uh, so in, in the promotions, somebody had to be the key player of making those things happen and having the vision, mm -hmm. the light way out there in the tunnel. So, uh, and it, was it staff, was it the board? Uh, how, how did all of this come together to really start uh, falling in place? Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, the, the professional staff, I think made recommendations to the board that, that were of the essence that, hey, you know, we need to get our name out there. Uh, people around the state don't know where Pflugerville is. Uh, at other places of Texas, and we're growing so rapidly, we need to make our presence known. And so we started going to trade shows all across the country, uh, whether it was in uh, San Francisco or New York or Chicago, and having booths at these major trade shows, trying to attract companies from all over the uh, all over the United States here. And we've been very successful in doing so. And in doing so, we've gotten the name of Pflugerville out there. And so if you start to talk to people about anybody in the solar industry today, they know the name Pflugerville, Texas, because they know of our project. And we've been so active in supporting those projects. And we support our businesses. If you go to any, any gun uh, store in the country, they know Tracking Point, one of our companies that we recruited here to Pflugerville. Uh, and we've promoted them. And they've been on Fox News and CNN and MSNBC all over the nation. And it's a you know, high-tech rifle company from Pflugerville, Texas. And so it kind of puts us on the map. Uh, we let people know we're in Austin. We're part of the greater Austin area. And everybody loves Austin. Austin's very high, hot and exciting place to be right now. And so you tell them that you're 20 minutes from downtown Austin, they know exactly where you are. They know exactly uh, where they want to be. And we try to make that very attractive for people to want to move here. And, and we use these uh, promotion budget to basically promote Pflugerville as a great place to do business. Um, in years past, uh, when somebody would say they were from Pflugerville, there would always be this uh, interesting look uh, Pflugerville, where is it? Mm -hmm. So uh, how did you change that into a superb positive? Well, uh, like I said, you know, when you got outside of the Austin area, nobody really knows where Pflugerville is. And so when we started going to these trade shows and promoting it in uh, industry magazines, uh, we, put, we put a star on the map and we said, this is Austin. We're part of Austin, Texas, the greater Austin area, but we're Pflugerville. And no, we weren't named by Dr. Seuss. That's the Pfluger family, and that's why we're named that way. And, and so we really just started uh, just getting out there, getting out, out, out into the country, getting out into other parts of Texas, making our presence known. Uh, we became members of many professional organizations, including the International Economic Development Council, where, and we've won many awards from them for our marketing programs. Uh, we've won awards from the Texas uh, uh, Economic Development Council as well for our marketing programs. And, and I think the Money Magazine articles are really the best evidence of how successful we've been. And in fact, another, a website the other day, apartment.com, named Pflugerville the seventh best suburb in the United States to live in. Round Rock was number eight. And so we, you know, we had a little fun with that. But uh, it's exciting. There's only one other Texas suburb on there, and that was Allen, Texas. In Allen, Texas, their average income of, that, of the people in that town is like $112,000 a year. We want to be like that. Uh, and, the, and that's why we're promoting now Pflugerville as an office market, and that's kind of where we see it going. Uh, so how has your staff changed uh, since you 
started a uh, number of employees and um, revving up for everything, uh, keep, keeping everything going and, and also being on the cutting edge, I would say. Well, sure. Well, you know, we had two employees, I think, when I started, and now we're up to four, uh, plus myself. Uh, and we're so busy, quite frankly, we need that many people just to kind of keep going uh, and doing what we're doing and stay on, to and stay on top of all our projects. Uh, we recruit companies from all over the United States, uh, and this year we've already had great success. Uh, to give you an example of how fast we're growing, um, this last year, Pflugerville, we, we built one and a half million square feet of light industrial and flex space, including the 250,000 square foot distribution facility for FedEx ground. That represents one third of all that type of space that was built in the entire Austin MSA. We built 1,100 homes. That represents 10 to 11 percent, or one out of every 10, one out of every nine homes or so built in the Austin MSA last year was built in Pflugerville, Texas. We did a million and a half square feet of retail space. I mean, we are just exploding uh, as, a, as a community right now. We have, we're, we have ge geographically, we're in the perfect location on the tollways. We have I-35 on one side, uh, even though we don't really touch I-35, we're close enough. Uh, we have 130, which has just been the greatest thing that ever happened to Pflugerville. Uh, and then we have the 45 tollway. And so, and we have infrastructure up and down both sides of the tollway. We're the only community for that entire 100 and whatever mile stretch of roadway that has any infrastructure on the tollway. So we're getting looked at from everybody. And that's why we have all these new exciting projects we just announced. And we're going to see $2 billion of capital investment put on that tollway, or more than that probably, in the next five years. That's just one project. It's $2 billion. That's a shocking amount when you realize that today the entire city of Pflugerville, houses, churches, convenience stores, you name it, is only worth $2.7 billion. Uh, it's going to change everything. It's going to make people here wealthier because we're going to be able to reduce property taxes further. It's going to put more money in their pocket. It's going to give people here in Pflugerville opportunities to work in town. Currently, 95% of the people that live in Pflugerville that are working age leave town to go to work. We want to make opportunities here in, in, in the city so that people can stay here and work. Uh, we see Pflugerville morphing in the next few years into a Frisco or Plano or McKinney, Sugarland, that type of suburb. Um, and if you'd like to, I can tell you a little bit about some of the things we see happening or is going to happen in the next five years. Sure, whatever you want to say. Well, uh, obviously we just did this Project Sunshine. We call it Pflugerville Crossing uh, right next to the water park, the Hawaiian Falls water park. Um, and it's, it, it consists of 1.9 million square feet of high-rise office towers. That's dramatic. We don't have any office buildings in Pflugerville today, and we're going to have 1.9 million square feet within the next five years. Those are high-paying office jobs. And so as you start to attract those type of people to work here in town and through natural attrition, what will happen is more of those individuals, those high net worth individuals, will live here in Pflugerville. They don't want to commute all day and get to work, and so they'll live here. They'll raise the overall income of everybody who lives in Pflugerville fairly dramatically. And, and just because of that one project, and, and that's only one piece of that project, that project also has one and a half million square feet of mid-rise uh, residential living with another 500,000 square feet of retail underneath it for a true mixed-use facility. In addition to that, it's got 22 restaurant pad sites, five hotel sites. Uh, and we're just now building the first hotel in Pflugerville. The Best Western Plus is under construction right now. Uh, the Marriott will be next uh, very shortly. Uh, but we're going to have five, somewhere around the neighborhood of seven hotels in the next three years. Well, we have none today. It, it's amazing. Do we presently have a hotel tax, or will that be something that could come? No, the city council will be creating that this year okay. uh, to coincide with the creation of that first hotel. Okay. Uh, where are the locations of those? The first two will be at the 130 Commerce Center, which is right there at the intersection of Pecan and 130. And how many acres are in that uh, uh, complex to be developed? Well, it's, uh, it's four phases, roughly. Phase one is 165 acres. Phase two is 370 acres. Phase three is 140 acres, and phase four, which we actually call 130 Commerce Center East, is about 400 acres. goes all the way to Lake Pflugerville. So all in all, it's about 800 acres or so, give or take. Uh, see what actually gets developed there. Um, but that's exciting. It's all right there on the tollway, right across from the, the Austin Executive Airport, our brand new $35 million private airport. So it's on, on both sides of the toll road? It's on all four corners. Yeah, well, it's on three corners. And we expect that it will be expanded to a fourth corner shortly. So uh, it takes a, uh, some collaboration also between PCDC and the chamber and the city, the, the, all of these entities working together to, to keep the ball rolling. Uh, sure. So what is that relationship uh, with, with uh, the chamber, for instance? Uh, okay. Particularly, I guess, coming up with slogans. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, they, they've evolved once... Uh, 
one thirty came through, and then we said, "Come home to shop." Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think we we are going to another phase. Yeah, and you know, I think the chamber does a great job uh, with small businesses here in Pflugerville, and 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 keeping those people connected with each other, and it helps them to have a, a place to lean on and other people in like situations to help them uh, grow and 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 thrive. Uh, with the city, the city can do certain things that we can't do. While we can give cash grants to companies or moving expenses or fit tenant finish out money, uh, the city can do uh, real property tax rebates, personal property tax rebates, sales tax rebates. That's not something PCDC can do. So a lot of times when we have a really strong company move into town, that's going to be bringing, uh, Lauren Concrete would be an example, brought their corporate headquarters into town. Uh, we gave them three hundred thousand dollars so they could build they could buy a purchase a building here and move into a headquarters here in Pflugerville. The city's rebating fifty percent of their sales tax. Well, that company last year did forty million dollars in sales tax that's going to be ringing through that Pflugerville register. And so even though the city gave back fifty percent of their portion of the sales tax, the city still collected a quarter million dollars in sales tax because it's only half of it. Well, that quarter million equates to one cent on our tax rate. Uh, the fire department that collects sales tax also got a quarter million dollars and PCDC that collects sales tax also got a quarter million dollars. So by moving that company out of Austin and into Pflugerville, we brought $750,000 annually into our community to serve our citizens and to help keep our own citizens tax rates lower. And so that's why we do projects like that. Uh, you know, we got our $300,000 back in a year and a half or less than that, that we gave them for their building. And now, now it's just benefiting. It's just, it's just all free money after that. We can go back and probably attribute SH-130 to being the economic engine for a lot of this happening. Without a doubt. One of the first things on just the land was the uh, Austin Executive Airport coming in. And, uh, of course, then you mentioned Stone Hill. Uh, so uh, as the town moves east, what do you see uh, as a vision of, of, of happening? I think you're going to see a lot more uh, uh, roadways both going north and south and east and west through Pflugerville. I think it won't be long before we have direct connections into Elgin. Uh, our, our, uh, our ETJ already goes past into Elgin ISD uh, and up against Bastrop County. Uh, we're the only city in the MSA that's not landlocked. Uh, quite frankly, that, that, that really has a lot of growth potential. Round Rock's landlocked, Cedar Park's landlocked. Uh, uh, Pflugerville uh, will be, without a doubt, the second largest city in the MSA in my opinion, 15 to 20 years from now. We'll catch Round Rock and we'll surpass them. Our current footprint at a low density development would allow us to grow to 275,000 people. I think with some of the high density development we're seeing up and down the 130 tollway, these high rise, mid rise uh, condominium projects and apartment comp uh, projects, I think Pflugerville has the potential to be much bigger than that. I think, I think in 30 years we could be pushing 500,000 people, uh, which is dramatic. Uh, but, you know, over the last 10 years, the U.S. Census came out just, just recently, and that said over the last 10 years, Pflugerville, Texas, was the 10th fastest growing city in the United States for cities between 50 and 500,000 people. We grew by 206%. No other city in Central Texas grew that fast over 10 years. Now, on a year-to-year -year basis, some cities grew much faster than us, as they did annexations and different things. But over a 10-year period, we were the fastest growing. Uh, it's surprising to a lot of people. Uh, they don't realize what's going on out here. They don't realize that our average income in Pflugerville is $80,000 a year, the same as Round Rock and Cedar Park. Uh, but as we turn into an office market, we think that average income is going to shoot past Round Rock and Cedar Park's average incomes uh, quite dramatically, especially with that, kind of, with that kind of development on the tollway. And that's just one project. We have another project on the 45 tollway that's going to add 350,000 square feet of office space. Uh, we've got projects at the 130 Commerce Center that's going to add another 120,000 square foot of office space. We're going to see probably three to four million square feet of office space in Pflugerville in the next five years. And that's something we've never had here. We've never had office space, much less that dramatic amount of office space. Uh, and so what you're going to see is companies flocking to this area because the rents are half of what they pay in Northwest Austin uh, or downtown. Uh, and we can do that because property is cheaper out here. We don't have the impervious recovery requirements because we're not over a recharge zone. Uh, we don't have to worry about the trees because Pflugerville as a farming community didn't, didn't uh, historically have trees. Uh, and as, flat, as Blackland Prairie, we didn't have trees except along the creek beds. And so we're actually foresting Pflugerville when it was never forested to begin with by planting trees. But we don't have real onerous requirements because we don't need them on the side of town. Uh, we don't have any endangered species on the side of town because it's all farmland and there's not a lot of that running around over here. And so we have advantages and we're very fast when it comes to business. We're very pro-business. We put through uh, projects very fast. 
you can get a building permit, a, a site development permit here in 60 days, where well, that same project in Austin might take you a year, a year and a half. So we're able to build faster, cheaper, better product. We don't have the traffic congestion and the traffic problems that Central Austin and North uh, West Austin has. And so that's very attractive to people because nobody wants to sit in traffic for half their life. And so with these brand new tollways, uh, even though we're getting 45,000 cars a day going down SH-130 currently, that doesn't compare to the 180,000 cars a day going down IH-35. And so it's a much better, it's a much better quality of life. You know, that's the city's motto where quality meets life. Wouldn't you rather work somewhere where you can get to work and not be sitting in traffic all day in a, in a timely manner? Of course you would. Our geographic location is also very helpful to us. You know, before that tollway was built, it was 45 minutes to get to Bergstrom Airport. With the tollway now, it's 15 minutes from Pecan at 1.30 to the terminal at Bergstrom. That's, that's great for companies that are flying in and out a lot. The other th advantage we have geographically is that where we're located, we are really 15 to 20 minutes from the entire educated North Austin, Williamson County workforce. Uh, you know, a lot of the blue collar workforce in Austin is in, in the South, South Austin, San Marcos area, Kyle. But the really the educated white collar workforce is all up here in the North Austin area. Central Austin, North Austin, West Austin. Well, we're 10 minutes on that tollway now from Georgetown. We're really across the street from Round Rock. We're across the street from Hutto. We're 10 minutes to Taylor. Uh, you got out to uh, Cedar Park. We're eight minutes on the tollway to Cedar Park. You know, maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes to Leander, and really 15, 20 minutes to all of North Austin. And so all those people can hop on those tollways and get to work in Pflugerville quickly. And that's your educated workforce. And that's what's going to drive, I think, the next really, you know, I almost call it like an, uh, another tier. Yeah, another, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna bump us up a level. It's gonna set us apart from our neighbors like Round Rock and Cedar Park, Georgetown, uh, because we're gonna have this office market. We're gonna have, we already have highly educated people in Pflugerville. Most people don't know 40% of our citizens have a bachelor's degree. 70% have some college. That's really high. Uh, over a thousand of our citizens in the last 10 years have received patents. And I know a lot of that's because we have Dell five minutes away and Samsung five minutes away from our borders. But you're going to see even more of that, and I think you're going to see even a higher percentage of college graduates moving to Pflugerville or living in Pflugerville because of all the office job type opportunities that require college degrees. And so really we're going to be, I, I would say, and, and that's way higher than what Austin's averages are. Our average income, our, our, educators, our education status is way higher than what the city of Austin is when you start looking at their statistics. We, we will be the, probably the most educated, highest paid city, over 50,000 people in the Austin MSA uh, by a lot, I think, in the next 10 to 15 years because of the way we're growing. Uh, and it's smart growth. Uh, and, and so we have these green fields on these tollways and we're able to plan them very carefully. And that's what we're doing. And you're just gonna see just, just this dramatic change in what Pflugerville is from a rural farming community to I would say probably a high tech educated office community. Capital Metro and Campo, they work on long-range uh, transportation plans, and uh, I know there's uh, connectors between Georgetown and, you know, South Austin, Art to Austin. You want to talk about any of those that are in the works? So sure, how, well. How do we interact with uh, having input now? And in at one time, Pflugerville did not even have input, but we have <laughs> people, I think, sitting on those boards. Yeah, we do have people on those boards, and, you know, and, and, and they, they sometimes have plans that aren't uh, compatible with the city and the citizens in the city of Pflugerville. Uh, you know, we opted out of Cap Metro uh, several years ago. The citizens of Pflugerville just didn't see the return on their money for the taxes. And that tax dollars now go to PCDC. Uh, and I think we do see a return on what PCDC does. Um, additionally, we're, we're not part of, of ACC either. Of course, we, we have numerous educational opportunities within a short drive of Pflugerville. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I think the taxpayers kind of feel that way too, at least currently they do. Um, and so, uh, with Campo and, and transportation possibilities, I think you're gonna see some really interesting things. Uh, you know, the first light rail line was built by Cap Metro to, from downtown Austin out to Leander through Cedar Park, ma mainly because they were in Cap Metro. Uh, the more lucrative line would have rather, or should have been built down the SH-130 tollway. You know, that was part of the Trans Trans-Texas Corridor originally. And there's over 1,200 feet of right-of-way there, enough to accommodate rail, uh, freight rail, uh, high-speed rail, light rail, whatever you want to put in there, there's enough right-of-way to accommodate it. Uh, the more lucrative line would have been to bring a light rail line down from Georgetown with stops in Round Rock, Hutto, Pflugerville, uh, Maynard, Weberville, right to the Austin Airport, and then from the Austin Airport straight into downtown Austin. 
I think you'll see that happen eventually. It, it won't be Cap Metro. I don't believe it does it because none of those, most of those communities aren't part of Cap Metro. Uh, but there'll be some other funding mechanism I think that'll come up. It might even be privately funded. I think you may see additional toll roads pop up in, in, in uh, Pflugerville and in parts of the Austin area uh, because that's the best way to fund things these days, especially when you're talking about a brand new road through a greenfield. Um, and I think those are exciting opportunities for everybody. As Austin grows and, and San Antonio grows and Houston grows and Dallas grows, you know, 95% of the people that live in Texas live in that triangle uh, of cities. Uh, and I think some people call it the Texaplex now, but that's where all the growth will be. And so you're gonna need many more roads, many more uh, transportation options. Uh, you know, I wouldn't shock me to see a regional airport between San Antonio and Austin one day. And, and, and a lot of that growth is gonna directly benefit Pflugerville. Uh, and it wouldn't shock me to see more toll roads come through Pflugerville in the future and more light rail options, maybe high speed rail, rail options, come, either come right through Pflugerville or very close to Pflugerville would benefit our citizens. I think the hotels too will uh, certainly, when we look at activities in Austin, the F1 and uh, South by Southwest and others, uh, there's always a shortage of, of, of room. And That's right. And, you know, we're going to, like I said, we have our first uh, hotel under construction right now. Uh, space that's available for uh, gatherings, the convention area is also. That's right, and uh, our, our, our Marriott Hotel with the Civic Center uh, for the citizens of Pflugerville, we're super excited about that because, you know, until now, we really the only places we've had for meetings have been Pfluger Hall and the Lions Club, basically metal buildings with linoleum floors, not the most elegant of locations for functions. They're, they're utilitarian, but they're just not elegant. Uh, this conference center will be elegant. It'll have nice, uh, beautiful amenities. It, it'll be a great place for wedding receptions. It'll be a great place for things like the uh, PFISD annual uh, uh, gala, yeah, awards. Uh, and it'd be nice to have that in Pflugerville. We'll be bringing that award show to Pflugerville, which is where it really needs to be. Um, and not just that, but the, the Chamber of Commerce has their annual function uh, in Round Rock. You know, it'll be nice that we can bring that in. That 20,000 square foot meeting space is bigger than what Round Rock has currently. You know, Round Rock's 100,000 people, we're 54,000 people. That, that meeting space is bigger than the biggest meeting space in Round Rock, also at their Marriott. And so it's gonna be a really nice, in fact, I think it's one of the, uh, when it's built, it'll be one of the top 10 largest facilities in the Austin MSA for meetings and for wedding receptions and for community events. And I think it'll just be great. You know, I mean, we got the Hawaiian Falls meeting room, which is nice, but it's not gonna be as nice and, and as well appointed as what's gonna happen at the Marriott uh, Courtyard. And so we're just, we're, you know, we're super excited about that. I think it opens up opportunities also for us to host other cities from around the state at statewide functions, uh, whether it be meetings of say the, the Texas City Managers Association or Texas City Attorney Association or whatever it happens to be, we can actually bring and recruit those types of events to Pflugerville and let people around the state come and see what we're doing or what we want to call the Pflugerville miracle. You know, how we're really, we're really just changing the whole face of the community uh, in our belief for the positive, making everybody here wealthier, uh, giving them greater access to shopping and dining and things that they've told us they wanted. Uh, and keep in mind, we don't do any of this stuff just because we think that's what people want. We, did, we do surveys. <laughs> uh, we, did a, we did a comprehensive economic development strategy and we're getting ready to update that strategy uh, where we surveyed business leader, business, uh, our businesses, we surveyed our citizens and said, what do you wanna see Pflugerville be in the next 10 years? What amenities do you wanna see? They told us they wanted things to do, places to eat. Well, you know, since I've been here, I think we've probably added 20 restaurants, uh, especially in the last three to five years. We have five or six restaurants right now under construction or getting ready to go under construction, uh, new ones. Uh, and so it gives people more dining options. We still have a ton of retail leakage in the community. Uh, you know, while we might have a, a Home Depot, we don't have a Lowe's. We have a Dick's, but we don't have an Academy. We have, you know what I mean? We have that those sort of amenities. Uh, and, and as we build what is basically our version of the domain over here in Pflugerville, we're gonna give people all those types of options. And we're gonna also expand their, uh, their living options. The first townhomes are being built in Pflugerville. We've never had townhomes before. We've got at least three projects that are building townhomes right now. We're gonna have mid-rise, uh, mid -rise basically apartments and condominiums in Pflugerville. And while they won't be the million dollar condos that are over at the domain, they might be three and four hundred thousand dollar condos which are, are more to our, 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 our community, fit our community better over here. And so it's very exciting to see what's going on in Pflugerville. It's a great time to be here. Um, it takes a mastermind behind a master plan. <laughs> and uh, I look at uh, the, the footprint, the, the, the topography, mm -hmm. and I can see it, it, someone has to be 
putting some little houses down saying this is where this goes and looking at that. So again, I assume that's in part of your arena or y'all's yes. area that uh, well, you know, and we see who's compatible with who and what needs to be where. And, we uh, do. You know, the city planning department obviously kind of gives us a, a basic outline of where things should go and where growth should happen and how it should happen to make the community compatible and, and livable and, and, and nice. And, you know, we saw that there was nothing going on at, at the corner of 130 and, and Pecan. And so we brought infrastructure to that corner and created the 130 Commerce Center. And in less than three years, we have $138 million in capital investment out there and 1,000 people working. Uh, and that's just the beginning. Uh, we have many, many bigger projects coming on the horizon, which are very exciting. But we're basically seeding that area of town where there was nothing going on. There was no traffic, hardly. There was nothing going on. And we said, that's going to be our light industrial area. Uh, and we, we still need to develop some more general industrial places as well uh, for Pflugerville, in my opinion. Uh, we looked at the 130 tollway up around Pflugerville Parkway. And between there and the tollway, we like, that needs to be our office corridor and our retail corridor, where we can really bring a lot of business and showcase Pflugerville in that corridor. We know that everything, the, the growth is all happening east of 130 right now. Anything north of Jesse Bowles, really needs to be residential. That's well suited for residential subdivisions. We have brand new subdivisions out there like Avalon and Sorrento uh, that are putting down four and $500,000 homes. That's the most expensive homes to ever be built in Pflugerville. We're really excited about that. That's executive housing. That's the housing for the people who work in those office buildings I was talking about. And so it's nice to have those options. We're all, all around Lake Pflugerville, which is one of the best amenities any city could have is a beautiful lake like that. And so we do see that. You know, I think everything north of Pflugerville Parkway Jesse Bowles, as you go out farther, is going to be residential. Uh, to the south, I think you'll slowly start moving into more light industrial, industrial uses uh, towards Pecan and uh, Fox Grove and that, those kind of areas and kind of keep that on the south side. Uh, and and there's, there's legitimate uh, reasons for that. There's, on that side of town, there's a lot of uh, high power lines. People typically don't like to live under those. There's a lot of gas lines, natural gas lines. There's a lot of petroleum lines. There's things that are probably not super compatible with residential uh, growth, those things that are potentially but dangerous, but would be great for industrial, perfect for industrial. And right across the street from Pecan is Austin's ETJ and the Austin Executive Airport. A lot of people don't like to live next to airports either. They kind of frown on that stuff. I know you might be an exception, but <laughs> it kind of came to you though, really, it wasn't really your choice. Um, but that's why that area is probably ideal for, for industrial, light industrial, industrial development, heavy commercial development. Uh, whereas up around the tollways, that's where you want to see all your shops. That's where you want to see your office buildings. And if we can combine those two with shops underneath the office buildings and then some residential, uh, you're going to see parking garages in the next two years in Pflugerville. Who would have thought we would have had parking garages out here in Pflugerville, Texas? You know, it's, it's an amazing thing. You know, when I got here, that was not even on the, we were worried about people putting sofas out on the front porch. We weren't worried about parking garages. You know, and, and now we're seeing all kinds of really great things uh, happening in town. And just, uh, it's just amazing what's going on. So do you uh, uh, sell t-shirts out? Do you go to conferences? How do you stay up with uh, the latest in what a, uh, someone in your position should be doing? Well, we, we do. The, uh, we attend IEDC, which is International Economic Development Council. We're members of the Texas Economic Development Council. We're part of a group called Team Texas, uh, which is a group of Texas uh, cities. Uh, that get together to promote econo economic development in Texas. Uh, we do go to conferences. Uh, we're part of Texas One, uh, which is probably one of the more important groups we're a member of. And that's the governor's program. It's a private organization, but the government, governor pretty much runs it or heads it up, his, his staff does. And uh, they go worldwide promoting economic development. Last September, I went to China with the governor. And was, it was me and it was an economic developer from McKinney, Texas, a suburb of Dallas. And we were the only two on that trip. And so we're there with the governor. And so we got to meet major Chinese officials, uh, including the vice chair of the Communist Party for the nation of China. And we got to tell them all about Texas. About, we told them all about Pflugerville, told them all about McKinney and how, what a great opportunities are there. And we were able to raise $15 million to build two office buildings here in Pflugerville, Texas on that trip. And so it's those types of connections and those types of things that put our name out there, not just in Texas, not just in the United States, but worldwide and those organizations that keep us up. And so as we stay in constant contact with the governor's office because they help us uh, make those contacts. 
and when we have projects where we're looking to do things here in Pflugerville or you know whatever we're looking to do there they can be instrumental in, in assisting us with those types of endeavors uh, we've talked about volunteerism with uh, some of our other uh, guests uh, and that's a very strong component of any community we've already talked about the board being volunteers absolutely but, uh, Another thing I think PCDC has uh, taken the charge on is they have a leadership class. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Go we ahead. did. We, about two years ago now, we created Leadership Pflugerville. And this is a class that's it's pretty typical in cities. Uh, but we had never had one here in Pflugerville, not a real successful program. And so we decided to, to market this program and to run this program and basically to help train the next, the next uh, generation of leaders in Pflugerville. And so we take it. We take we take applications annually, and we put on a class called Leadership Pflugerville. And we it's it's about a six month class, and they meet every uh, they meet once or twice a month for six months, and they they take on a project, a community project. Uh, last year they helped uh, fund and build some with PISD PFISD, they helped build some uh, uh, gazebos and some uh, picnic tables in some of our parks. And they worked with the vocational programs at the school district, with the school district, uh, to do that, uh, and help the community and had a community project. But we also teach them about government, how the city council works, how our different boards and commissions work. They're required to go to meetings, certain number of meetings, uh, and and really just give them a good idea. The chamber of commerce talks to them. We talk to them about economic development. Uh, they get to go and see how every section of the city operates, and how all those people come together, and how all those volunteers uh, operate. And since then, we've actually had several of those members go on to serve on city boards that have served that have been in the in the leadership class. Uh, and it's it's for people who really want to get involved but don't quite know where to start. And and there are many of them are business leaders in the community, uh, but they've never really gotten active in the community itself. And so it's a great opportunity for them to do so. Um, another thing is uh, when SH 130 was designed, uh, I think Pflugerville has what five exits. Three, I think, uh, on 130. And there, well, I guess the sign says Porterville. It might be beyond the yeah. city limits, but that was another uh, important key that that people can get off. And yeah, you know, we have three or four exits, and I know we got the flyover going into the 45 tollway. Um, and that, when I first got here, that was kind of a thorn of contention as city attorney because. Uh, we didn't really ask the tollway to come through. They just decided they were going to come through Pflugerville, uh, much to the chagrin of some of our farmers, I think, at the time, uh, because they took a large chunk of right away right through the middle of town. And Pflugerville didn't participate in the project. We, they had a text dot, uh, text department transportation had asked us for $4 million, and we said, no, we, it wasn't our idea to build the tollway. It was your idea. Uh, in retrospect, it's still the best thing that ever happened to Pflugerville, but we didn't participate at the time. And so TxDOT actually, they gave us a couple of exits, but they didn't put Pflugerville on any of them. And so working with our state representatives, we were able to convince TxDOT that maybe we should have exits that say Pflugerville on them. And now we've got those exits and you know, it's exciting. And, and, and it's just been a great opportunity. And in fact, we actually even participated with TxDOT, PCDC did, uh, and, keep, and, and keep Texas Beautiful program, where we went out and purchased wildflower seeds and we, we uh, planted over $35,000 of wildflowers up and down the tollway. So in the spring, when you're driving our tollway and you see blue bonnets and buttercups and Indian paintbrushes, you can thank PCDC for some of that, uh, along with the highway department, uh, for helping us uh, do that and make sure that for generations to come, when you're driving through Pflugerville in the spring, it'll just be a gorgeous uh, view. You've met people uh, that are looking at our city, so I get, what are some of their impressions when they come in, uh, first impressions? Uh, it depends who you talk to. I'm, I'm sure they're all over the spectrum. Yeah, you know, it, it depends who you talk to. Um, they're all good, quite frankly. Uh, the, the funniest ones are the ones I enjoy the most are people who are from Austin. And they're looking to move a business out of Austin into Pflugerville, and they're shocked. They're like, I had no idea. I hadn't been out to Pflugerville in 10 years. And they come out and look at it, and they're just floored. I mean, they, they, they can't believe how nice it is, how new everything is, how clean it is. Uh, and, and they just, I guess they have these impressions sometimes, you know, when you live in a city and you don't get out to your own city and your, the, the cities around your city and see them, uh, but they're just, they're just blown away. Uh, when people come from out of, out of state, that, you know, or, or out, of, out of state or out of uh, the city anyway that aren't from the MSA, they're impressed. You know, they see how beautiful it is. They see what we're doing. Uh, they see the growth. Uh, once, once again, it's, it is impressive. You know, all the buildings of Pflugerville are almost new. You know, Pflugerville, sure, it's an old community, 
but the lion's share of the community has only been here since the 70s, 80s, even, and probably less than that. I, you know, I, I, if you look at it, most of the construction in Pflugerville is new. Uh, you're going to see, you know, why our median household income, our median household price has jumped from 160 to 190 in the last three years. When we start annexing these MUDs uh, out east of 130 Tollway into the city limits proper, which will start occurring here pretty quick with all the Blackhawks and Lakesides and all that kind of stuff, you're going to see that, because those homes are expensive out there, you're going to see the medium household price of a house in Pflugerville jump, jump dramatically. Uh, I would guess in the next five, five years that, that median household price in Pflugerville will be closer to $250,000 as we start annexing aggressively out in those areas. And, and it just impresses people. So do you project that we'll continue to have lots of MUDs in future development for residentials, or do you think that the city will get ahead? I think there'll be a mix. Uh, right now, we're not doing any new MUDs, but that may change. You know, it changes with city managers and city administrations and things like that, whether they like them or they don't like them. Uh, there's advantages and disadvantages to them. Uh, just like anything else. Uh, we have some MUDs that are out there that haven't been activated yet. Uh, but you're going to see massive amounts of growth. I have people, I've had uh, developers looking for land, big national developers, to do new subdivisions uh, regularly. Probably on a monthly basis, I talk to some developer who wants to come out here and buy 500 to 1,000 acres for, for a residential subdivision. Uh, and so that's why we can't really see that growth stopping. 66,000 people moved to the Austin MSA last year. 60,000 the year before. The growth is, is dramatic. Um, I don't know how long that's sustainable. I don't know how long that'll continue. But not only did 66,000 people move to the Austin MSA, our unemployment rate went down. So they got jobs. You know, and, and we, you know, we are the Texas miracle. They said we have, uh, Goldman Sachs just came out and said Texas has 100 years of natural gas. Well, with that natural gas comes lower energy prices which means cheaper, cheaper manufacturing prices, which means this is a better place to do business anywhere in the country. And so we're going to continue to see the Rust Belt move to Texas and Californians to move to Texas, uh, where we got more economic freedoms than they do in their states. And, you know, I think at least for the next 20 to 30 years, it's going to be just a grow, 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 grow pattern here in Texas, at least, at least in Pflugerville. Office is presently located. Y'all just have moved into the Impact News building. That's um, right. Impact News was uh, actually on Forbes list, wasn't it? That's right. Just Can last year. A bit about Impact News. Yeah, community. Yeah, Community Impact Newspaper. The owner, John Garrett, uh, went to Flickerville High School. Uh, he started that. He had worked for the Austin Business Journal in advertising, and he uh, decided to start his own uh, paper. It's a, it's a unique business model. What they basically do is they, they do a, ma a monthly magazine or magazine type style newspaper, but they cover certain areas. Our version here is Pflugerville, Round Rock, and Hutto. Uh, they have another version for Cedar Park and Leander and different parts of Austin, but they've already moved into Dallas and Houston. And so last year, Forbes magazine named them the fastest growing media company in Texas. And it's just a, it's just a great product. It goes to your community, and so in that paper, you get to see what the Pflugerville City Council did or the Hutto City Council did, where the Austin American Statesman doesn't always cover those local events very well. And so people are really interested in it. And it's free, it comes to your mailbox, and it's supported just by the advertisers who advertise in the, in the magazine. And so it's a, it's a fantastic thing, and, and we, uh, we help them secure that location in Pflugerville so they could continue to grow their business in Pflugerville. Uh, they built a 10,000 square foot building. Uh, they have already 75, I think, employees. They're growing so fast that they just built that building two years ago and they've already had to take over the break room for more office space. And now we approved another project to build a 30,000 square foot addition to, to that building right next to it, right there on the tollway, so they can continue to grow because that's how fast they're growing. And we're just super excited to have them in our community. Uh, so who do you see as um, uh, leaders or key changers, characters in, in, our, in our town? We're, we're gonna go back and talk about Pflugerville now, the town. Uh, Is there any that you'd like to share? Yeah, you know, I mean, we have a lot of uh, leaders and, and a lot of people that are really contributing to the city. Um, you know, uh, on city council, we have Omar Pena and Starlet Sattler, who also serve on my board. And, and they volunteer to do those types of things, and they really give a lot of their time. And so it's exciting to see uh, people who are not compensated, but that care so much about the community that they're willing to spend time on not just one board, the unpaid city council who meets all the time and is a, a dramatic um, uh, uh, time consuming job, uh, especially for no remuneration, <laughs> to then go and serve on PCDC as well. 
and I think Starlet also serves on the Deutschen Fest committee and has for years. And I mean, she, you know, she gives to the community probably as much as anybody I think I, I, I've seen. Um, obviously, we have our, our superintendent of schools, uh, Dr. Torres, you know, and, and I, another great leader in the community, and, and it's great to see him and everything they're doing at PFISD. Uh, we have, uh, you know, great state and uh, representatives out of here. Uh, you know, I think both the sheriff of Travis County and one of our state representatives, uh, Greg Hamilton, the sheriff, and Donna Dukes, both live in Pflugerville, or uh, Pflugerville ZTJ. Cecilia does too. Now. And Cecilia Israel. Oh, I didn't know she moved into Pflugerville. So now we've got all our state representatives living here. Uh, Don Flores, one of our U.S. congressmen, is just, he can't wait till we build an office building because right now he has to office in Austin. But he doesn't want to office in Austin. He wants to office in Pflugerville. He's told me several times. And so I think very shortly we'll have one of our two U.S. congressmen uh, headquartered right here uh, in Pflugerville, with his, uh, or at least with his uh, Austin area office. And so that's, that's exciting. Uh, and so we have a lot of great leaders in the community like that. Uh, you know, Chief Hooker with the Pflugerville Police Department, he's been with the police department for 30 years. Uh, and he's chief of police, worked his way up through the department. Uh, you don't meet anybody more honest. Uh, or somebody who's protected our community, you know, any more than he has over for three decades. Uh, and, you know, the list goes on and on. You can name so many people that, are, that fit that category. Well, thank you very much, Floyd. If there's any other comments you want to have, also you're welcome to say anything else. Uh, I just have to tell everybody, uh, this is probably uh, the greatest time of economic prosperity to ever hit Pflugerville. Uh, I can't. I, I haven't seen anything in what I've studied about Pflugerville's past or what I see in the future. There is no better time than right now to be in Pflugerville with the growth that's going on, uh, the excitement that's in the community about the things that are coming and what's happening in town, the fourth high school getting ready to be built. Uh, you know, uh, it's, just, it's just a super exciting time to be in this community, and, and there couldn't be any better place to be. Thank you very much for all you do. Sure, thank you.